I'll just show you a few pictures so that you can at least uh, um, have an idea. So in this first uh, slide, when you see this picture, it's all about Mauritius being a tourist destination, which is very true. Uh, our economy is largely dependent on tourism. And uh, in fact, during the pandemic, tourism was um, totally closed and uh, our economy has been badly impacted by the closure of the tourism uh, industry. So just to show you this picture is about the, the tourism, uh, I mean, the beautiful uh, nature that Mauritius has, be it in terms of the beaches, be it in terms of the greenery, or the seven colored earth, or even the uh, natural beauty of the country. So this is one view, one perspective that you have of the country, but it's not just about tourism, because uh, let's say when, when we speak to, to uh, foreign uh, people, I mean, foreigners about Mauritius, myself, my own experience I'm sharing when I speak to, to uh, Indians, especially the business community in India, oh yeah, they say, yes, yes, okay, Mauritius is a beautiful place. It's good for tourism, it's good for leisure. But then there is more to it than just tourism. So this is where you see what Mauritius is all about. Here in this slide, you will see some pictures about the industry. For example, here you see on the bottom right, you will see textile uh, manufacturing taking place. Uh, on, the, on the left of this uh, a bottom right, you will see one industry which is high tech into the medical devices manufacturing and some pictures of the services industry because financial services is very strong in Mauritius. And in fact, today we have positioned ourselves as a regional leading Marish, I mean, international financial center. Yeah, so uh, just to give you a brief uh, about Mauritius in terms uh, of, its, uh, of, the, of the country, of the economy and everything. So we are a small population of just 1,000 times less than that of India, that is 1.3 million people, Kerala. The land mass is also, um, I would say, could be the size of, the, of uh, Delhi, probably half the size of Delhi. Literacy rate is very high. Languages that we speak are uh, English and French, French official. At the same time, we, speak, we do speak third languages, for example, Hindi. Uh, we, 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 have, we have a uh, majority of the population that uh, is of Indian descent, Indian origin, so around 70%. So a uh, lot, many of us speak Hindi. Um, we speak Bhojpuri, Tamil, Marathi, Telugu, uh, and so on and so forth. And I, I mentioned about the land mass, that is a land surface area of Mauritius, but we do have an exclusive economic zone that is the ocean, which is a huge exclusive economic zone of 2.3 million square kilometers. And uh, we do have agreements with uh, many countries around the world. 40, 46 agreements have been signed in terms of the double tax taxation avoidance agreements, one with India and 20, around 20 with African countries. And we also do have investment protection, uh, promotion and protection agreements. So the country, uh, I, I mentioned to you uh, initially in my third slide that is Mauritius is also about industry, about economic activities, economic development uh, that, that, has, uh, that takes place. Uh, so here you can see that it is a diversified economy. So we do have sectors such as manufacturing, financial services, today financial services is a top most in terms of contribution to the economy. So uh, financial services, IT technology, and uh, during the pandemic, we have seen that uh, technology has taken center stage and more and more companies that uh, never used technology. Now they are being, um, I would say they are being compelled to make use of technology for their operations to continue. So information and communication technology is another, another sector which is very thriving in Mauritius, very dynamic, very vibrant. Uh, logistics and supply chain, pharmaceuticals, and yes, I must, I, I must mention here about pharmaceuticals. Uh, government is putting a, uh, putting a lot of emphasis in terms of encouraging and attracting companies uh, from all over the world, including from India, because we know that India is the pharmacy of the world. And so uh, government of Mauritius is encouraging companies to come and set up manufacturing units of pharmaceutical products, medicines, be it medicines, be it vaccines. It can be vaccines for the COVID-19 or other vaccines because uh, Africa is a huge market in terms of medicines and vaccines. Professional services, consumer business, uh, real estate, green technology, agro-industry, media, and creative. So you will see later that Mauritius is a, a, a very attractive place for Indian producers to come and shoot movies uh, in, our, in our country. So uh, yes. Now, uh, just to give you, in terms of the contribution, I mentioned that uh, a 
manufacturing. So we can see uh, manufacturing is 12.3% uh, is, uh, tourism, but tourism uh, it will have gone down because of the uh, closure. Uh, but now uh, also I must mention here that uh, now as from the 1st of October, we are fully opening our country, our borders are being fully opened for uh, fully vaccinated uh, travelers. And so they can come to the country without restriction, then they can be in, in uh, they can go for their, whether it is for their meetings, for their business or for leisure, and there will be no restriction. Currently, there is a seven day quarantine, I would say seven day hotel stay that they have to, uh, to be in the hotel before they are able to move out. So as from 1st October, this uh, restriction is being lifted. So financial services, we are a strong financial center in the international financial center. The real estate and property sector is also very strong. And in fact, we do encourage companies from India, whether they are developers or whether they want to come in, uh, in uh, stay in Mauritius. So we encourage uh, both companies as well as individuals from India to come and uh, either develop property or to buy, acquire property in Mauritius for their own uh, benefit. Yeah, ICT and BPO I mentioned. And so just, just give me one second because, uh, yeah, okay. So now as a country, we are very safe and we are a very safe destination for business and investment. So I, I mentioned briefly about the pharmaceutical sector earlier. So here I would like to just uh, show you that today we have one company, which is uh, again an Indian, Indian company that has set up in, in Mauritius. Uh, producing medicine, supplying the local market, but also exporting, exporting mostly to Africa, because Africa, as I mentioned earlier, it's a huge market. You will see later when I will explain to you how, what are the benefits, how you can uh, uh, set up in Mauritius and take advantage of, uh, of the market that is a regional market from Mauritius, Mauritius being the original platform for, for developing. So for companies that want to come and set up in the pharmaceutical sector today, so uh, some of the incentives that we are providing is an eight year tax holiday. So when you come and set up a manufacturing unit for pharmaceutical products, so you will benefit from an eight year tax holiday. So there are certain exemptions which are also apl applicable today. Like for example, there's a building and land use permit. So the fees for that has been waived for pharmaceutical sector when you're constructing your, your, your manufacturing plant. So there will be no registration duty and land transfer tax. Uh, again, uh, in terms of a margin of preference, that is government is allowing companies to set up, but at the same time, they will be able to supply the market. I mean, when I say the market, basically it's about government tenders we're speaking here. So they will be able to supply around 15%, uh, sorry, yeah, 15% uh, in terms of the margin of preference when they are <coughs> producing. No import duties and equipment, raw materials or machines and anything. And we also provide a subsidized rate on electricity for industrial production, industrial activities in Mauritius. And believe me, you, the industrial tariff in Mauritius is much, much more competitive than what we can see in India. Yeah, so uh, another sector which is very important for us is the medical devices sector. So this, uh, this falls under the uh, sorry high-tech manufacturing. And here you will see that we have a, quite a few companies which are already present in Mauritius and they are exporting world, worldwide. So the main market being France. But when you look at this uh, chart, I mean, this, this uh, chart on the right, on the top right, you will see that India is the second most important export market for medical devices from, uh, from Mauritius. So we're exporting a lot of medical devices to, to India. So Mauritius, in fact, is, is a competitive uh, market, in competitive, uh, I would say, sourcing place for companies to, uh, from India to source their medical devices products and then to, to supply the market here in India. So what are the products which are being exported today? We'll see needles, catheters, uh, medical and surgical sciences, and electro diagnostic apparatus and all that, syringes and all that, yeah. So uh, in terms of industrial premises, so here you can see some pictures about the industrial premises. For example, we have uh, a industrial space for textile manufacturing, you know, industrial space for high-tech manufacturing. In the, in the top right corner, you will see that this is uh, where medical devices today are operating and producing uh, their medical devices and support, uh, supplying the world over. <clears throat> 
This is a, 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 I would say, a plan of the pharmaceutical and life sciences park that government has come up with, which is on the corridor from uh, the capital city, which is Port Louis, to the airport. So it's uh, just 10, min 10 minutes away from the airport. So and this, this is a park where we are encouraging companies to come and uh, either they can acquire land or they can lease land and then can set up their unit in, in this, uh, in this uh, park. So what about the, uh, the financial center? I mentioned Mauritius is, a, is, a, is an international financial center of choice today. In fact, many companies are using Mauritius for their different, different activities. So what are these activities that companies are looking for in terms of setting up in Mauritius? Uh, it's about banking and insurance. And then in the banking and insurance today, you have a different uh, set of activities, sub, sub sectors, which are like invest in, investment banking, private uh, banking, insurance or reinsurance captives and all that's happening. Cross-border investment. For example, uh, companies from India, a lot of them today are operating in Africa. So they have their business happening in Africa and across sectors. So what they do, so they set up their structure in Mauritius and then they invest in the, uh, in the African country. Because what, what, what is interesting about Mauritius, Mauritius gives them that safety, that security of investment, because we do have um, as I mentioned earlier, investment protection and promotion, uh, sorry, investment pr protection agreements with uh, around 20 countries in Africa. So that gives you that safety, that security that your investment is safe when you are investing in, in Africa, when you're doing it through Mauritius, of course, as I said. So in the cross border, it can be about regional headquartering, it can be treasury management, private equity, OLPs, global funds, investment holdings, and so on and so forth. Similarly, now we have a vibrant stock exchange in Mauritius. So companies, Indian companies can come and set up and then list themselves in, in Mauritius and do capital raising. So this is also possible. Uh, and then of course, there are the professional services, which we also provide like uh, legal services, accountancy, BPO and all that. So just to, just to put this into perspective, today we have more than 12,000 international companies which have set up in Mauritius. Uh, more than 1,000 global funds are set up. The assets and the management, you can see they are over $400 billion today. And we are home to approximately 4,600 high net worth individuals in Mauritius. So what are the new activities that are coming in the financial services sector in Mauritius? So this is about family office. For example, uh, family uh, in India can choose to set up their family office in Mauritius and take advantage of the opportunities that Mauritius is offering through the families, a family office, I will, I will say, uh, ecosystem, whether it be it about the opportunities in Mauritius or in Africa or even outside Africa also. So this is a possibility that family offices can look into setting up in Mauritius, investment banking, regional headquartering, and all that. So again, we are whitelisted in terms of the OECD. Uh, probably, as you may be knowing, um, we are in the gray list of of the FATF, uh, and also we are uh, under monitoring by the uh, European Union, and uh, not, not uh, this coming week, but the week after, a team of the FATF is coming to Mauritius for the final uh, audit, because I would say online audits uh, and all that monitoring has been done, but now they have to come to Mauritius and do the final audit, and we are keeping, all of us are keeping fingers crossed that we will be out of this gray listing by whether it is by the FATF or even from the European Union. And so what, once that is done, then we know that we are, we are again, uh, you know, in the league of playing big in terms of attracting more investment in Mauritius in our financial center. So the film industry, I mentioned about the film industry briefly. So uh, you can see that what we are encouraging today, it's about companies or producers coming to do pre-production, production at the same time, post-production. So here you will see that there are certain benefits which are provided when companies are setting up in Mauritius or producing in Mauritius. And what are the sort of uh, uh, films that, that they can do or what sort of uh, projects that they can do? They can do feature film, it can be high-end TV commercial documentaries, TV programs, music video and dubbing. And we have a film rebate scheme to cover all this. Why? Why Indian companies or Indian producers are coming to Mauritius to produce is because of the attractive film rebate scheme that we have. The film rebate scheme implies that we are providing a cash back in terms of the expenses incurred in Mauritius 
So they get a cashback, that is they get a refund between 30 up to 40%. So when you look at the 30% rebate category, so your qualified uh, production expenditure has to be of 100,000 US dollars or more, then you are eligible for 30% uh, rebate. If your expenditure, your QPE is more than $1 million, then you are eligible for the 40% rebate. So this is how the film rebate scheme is very attractive and how Indian companies are coming, Indian producers are coming to Mauritius and produce. So what are some of the uh, expenditures which, which are covered under the film rebate scheme? So there's ground light, transport, logistics, remuneration for cost and crew, accommodation, catering, travel to Mauritius. So your flight, uh, uh, flight charges, I mean, your travel from uh, India to Mauritius is covered in the, under, the, under the film rebate scheme. When you're in Mauritius, you have to hire equipment and all this, you know, that location, location fees. So these are all covered in the, under the scheme. So here you can see uh, some of the gra this graphic shows how India is taking a huge advantage of this. In fact, 31% of, uh, of the refund under the film rebate scheme has gone to Indian producers. So just to show you how India is a major player in terms of film production in Mauritius. So why, I mean, we have spoken about all this, what Mauritius is about, what are the economy, what is the economy, the diverse, uh, the different sectors of economic activities. I've given you some examples about the pharmaceutical sector, the medical devices, the financial services, the film industry, but just a few examples because we have many more sectors. But uh, if I have to speak, I can speak for the, day, for the whole day, but I just limit it to, to, that, uh, to that level. And why we tell you now to come to Mauritius, so which is very important to, for you to understand that there are all opportunities, but why should you come to Mauritius rather than whether doing it from India or for, for example, going to other jurisdictions, why? So here you can see that we are very stable and we are safe and we have a predictable, predictable environment. It is a great place to live, business friendly environment. It's a, it has its own future ready infrastructure. And we, we continue to, to improve the infrastructure and also develop new one as well. And the global connectivity is there, whether it is in terms of the, today we speak about technology, so we are globally connected and talent in terms of the uh, hiring of the people for, for your uh, professional needs. Uh, this is all available in Mauritius, yeah. So international, uh, some international benchmarks, you will see that we are a globally, we rank 13th in terms of the ease of doing business, which is very important for investors or business people when they're considering a jurisdiction or a location to set up their new projects, so which is very important. And not only 13th in terms of uh, global I mean, uh, ranking, but also first in Africa. And we have been first in Africa for a number of years, I think for more than 15 years. Uh, we have stopped counting in fact, yeah. So yes, and in other indices as well, we are, we are first in Afri Africa, for example, in the Global Competitiveness Index, in the Mo Ibrahim Index of African Governance, same thing for Travel and Tourism or International Property Rights Index. So we are a leading business friendly platform. Uh, here, I'm just uh, showing you that uh, we have preferential market access to 70% of the world population. So 70% of the world population Mauritius covers in terms of preferential market access. I'm going to a little bit more detail in the next slide. So uh, in terms of, uh, a, so as I showed you in the financial services uh, uh, section, so we are a leading home of private equity funds investing in Africa. And we are third in terms of uh, export of country now to the European Union. So these are just some of the, uh, some of the, I would say, pointers to, to give you an idea about Mauritius and why you should mo choose Mauritius, whether you want to come and invest in Mauritius or you want to come and work and live in Mauritius or whether even if you want to come and retire in Mauritius. So these are different possibilities or work remotely in Mauritius. Today, we are also encouraging companies to come and work remotely under the premium visa that we have introduced last year during the pandemic. Yeah, so. Yes, so uh, I, I mentioned about the diversified economy earlier, so I won't go into detail in this one. So the business environment, which is very important again. Uh, so you can incorporate your company very quickly within a day. In fact, we say to be very cautious, we say within two hours, we can, your, your company can be incorporated in Mauritius. So that's how fast we do it. 
the taxation system is uh, harmonized in terms of the corporate tax, that is the company tax, or the individual income tax, or even the VAT, that is the value-added tax. Uh, India, you have a GST, which is which has different brackets. So in Mauritius, we have VAT. So all these different taxes, income tax, corporate tax, and VAT, they're all harmonized at 50%, uh, sorry, 15, one five. 15% in Mauritius, single tax rate for everybody. However, or moreover, we provide some additional incentives to priority sectors, priority areas. For example, I mentioned about the pharmaceutical activities. So in the pharmaceutical sector, we are giving an eight-year eight -year tax holiday. Similarly, if you set up a family office in Mauritius, we will give you a five-year tax holiday. So, uh, so there, as I mentioned, there are certain areas where we, we are prioritizing in terms of attracting investment. So, there we are uh, providing some additional benefits. And for companies which are manufacturing in Mauritius and exporting, so they benefit from a reduced corporate tax from 15 to 3%. So these export oriented companies, they will pay only 3% corporate tax in, uh, when they have set up in Mauritius and they're exporting. So we do have the rule of law. Uh, there is no capital gains tax in Mauritius, unlike what is in India. So no capital gains tax, no exchange control. So if you have your money to, to be moved in or out of Mauritius, so you don't require that approval. Like here in, in India, you have to go through your uh, authorized dealer and go to the RBI to get clearance, which is anything be below, I mean, above the LRI. So that is a liberalized uh, remittance scheme. So uh, LRI. Uh, so in Mauritius, you don't have all this hassle. It's so administrative burden free. So we make it as simple as that for you to come and set up and operate in Mauritius. And beauty of it that you can own your company at 100%. So you can be 100% foreign, own, foreign ownership. So, but we, you, you do have the option if you choose to, to work uh, in a joint venture in a loop with a local partner that is also possible. Yeah. So the legal framework, we have a dual legal framework, which is based on uh, the British as well as the French law, that is British common law and the Code Napoleon Civil Code, Code de Commerce, which is French. We have a dual system, uh, but uh, this does not pose any problem because uh, most of our, of our laws are written in English. And uh, we do have lawyers which are very well qualified and very well conversant with every single piece of the legislation in Mauritius. So there is a protection of your property rights, the are registered legal professionals, the Supreme Court is there, and the highest court of appeal in Mauritius is the Privy Council. Infrastructure, it is a modern infrastructure, whether it is in terms of the sea, uh, uh, the seaport or the airport, in terms of the road network, healthcare infrastructure, education infrastructure, everything is, is available in Mauritius. So, yeah. So I mentioned about the preferential market access that is 70% uh, of the world population is uh, eligible for preferential market access for goods which are produced in Mauritius. That is made in Mauritius, exported to this 70% uh, uh, of the world market, it is duty free. So what are these markets? So what are these markets? So we have the uh, European Union that is economic partnership agreement with the European Union. And now, I mean, uh, after the Brexit, so with the UK also, we do have that agreement. So European Union is covered. We have US with the Africa Growth and Opportunity Act. We have an FTA with Turkey, a PTA with Pakistan. We have an FTA with China. We have a regional uh, markets also, that is a Comesa and the SADC that is in Africa. And we also have now, <coughs> excuse me, now Africa has become one single market with the Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement. So since the beginning of this year, 1st of January of this year, so in Africa is one single market, Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement. So which means that made in Mauritius products can go to the entire Africa at preferential market access. And we have also signed one agreement with India, it was mentioned earlier, it is a comprehensive economic cooperation and partnership agreement, SECPA. So we have signed that agreement with India and which also provides Indian companies, importers to look at opportunities for sourcing products from Mauritius for the Indian market, but also for Indian companies that want to export their products to Mauritius. So under SECPA, Mauritius, has certain advantages in terms of 615 products 
that uh, Indian companies can import uh, under SEPA. I mean, it, has, it is a preferential market where it is about duty free or reduced duty. And similarly, 310 products from India to Mauritius. So yes, about SADEC and Africa. So as I mean, uh, SADEC, Comesa and AFCFTA, I was mentioning. So yes, Mauritius. Uh, if you look at Mauritius uh, in terms of manufacturing, I'll just take one single example here. It is Mauritius, um, we are part of Comesa of SADEC. And in SADEC, you have a huge market, which is South Africa. So South Africa, if you produce in Mauritius and you export to South Africa, you are covered under the SADEC uh, trade protocol for duty-free uh, access into uh, South Africa. And here, I'll take the example of shirts of garments. So if you export a made in India shirt to South Africa, you, your, your uh, customer in South Africa will have to bear a 40% of import duty. But the same, same shirt or garment that you're producing in Mauritius, it is made in Mauritius and you're exporting to South Africa, it goes duty-free. So immediately you will see that you have a 40% plus uh, duty advantage. That's one thing. And then it's from Mauritius, as I mentioned, that is we export an export-oriented company. So you're paying only 3% uh, tax in terms of your corporate uh, tax. So you see that you have a duty advantage of 40% and also 3% only reduced corporate tax. So these are all the advantages that Mauritius is providing to the preferential market access that, that I mentioned. So, and here, and what are the, some of the products which are being exported? Then this is a pre-pandemic uh, figures, I, as you can see. So we exported nearly $1.4 billion of products from Mauritius to, to the market, to the worldwide markets. Uh, our key markets being UK, France, USA, South Africa, Italy. And uh, with SECPA now, uh, I'm sure that India will form part of our uh, key market as well. And some of the products, on, as you can see on the left, are textile and apparel, that is garments, processed food, seafood, sugar, expo exotic fruits, and so on and so forth. So uh, if you want to come to Mauritius, again, uh, we are still under the Y Mauritius. So it offers you an opportunity to come and enjoy a unique lifestyle experience, whether it is whether you want to come and invest or you want to come and work or live and retire in Mauritius. So in our, in the budget uh, uh, that was presented in uh, uh, recently, I mean, in June, and now it has already uh, been, uh, it has already, I would say, uh, been passed into law. That is the Finance Act has already been enacted. Yeah. So as I mentioned, so we have reopened uh, gradually from 15th of July, we started re reopening and uh, as from 1st of October, so it will be full opening without restriction, restriction for fully vaccinated uh, travelers. But from 1st of September, so the 14 days uh, hotel stay has been reduced to seven days now. So some of the, uh, in terms of the ease of doing business, we have rationalized our investment schemes. So we have come up with an investment certificate and also a premium investor certificate. There is also an export development certificate that has been introduced. Uh, so uh, about the pharmaceutical and biotechnology, I would say industry. So uh, here you can see that there is full tax credit, which, which will be provided to companies on the cost of acquisition of patents or, or for uh, biotech and pharma companies. The companies which are engaged, again, they will be taxed at a reduced rate of, a rate of 3%, uh, even if they are selling in the local market. So the promotion of exports, we have also come up with some, some schemes about promotion of exports from Mauritius. I mean, these days we hear a lot from the Commerce and Industry Minister, Indian Commerce and Industry Minister about the figures. For example, I saw this morning about $100 billion of textile exports. The target is $100 billion. So in Mauritius, we have also come up with schemes to encourage more and more exports to, to happen from Mauritius to, to the world. So what about the relationship between the two countries? So here you will see that I mean, when you look at the relationship, I think it all started back more than two, uh, nearly 200 years back because when the first indentured laborers come to Mauritius uh, uh, to work in the sugarcane fields, that's the time uh, when uh, that relationship started and the, uh, when we were uh, colonized by, uh, by, I think by the British and also the French. So yeah, uh, uh, over the years, so now this relationship between Mauritius has come stronger and stronger. So we have been, uh, we have established our relationship in terms of diplomatic relations since 53 years, that is after we got our independence. But before that, we have always had friendly relationship. 
and a lot of MOUs have been signed between the between the two countries in various sectors, be it education, financial services, defense, so industry, training, capacity building, healthcare. A lot. I mean, I mean, there is a lot of uh, MOUs that have been signed between the two countries, and there are always high level visits that take place. I mean, um, before the pandemic uh, that, that took place between the two countries, the Prime Minister of India visited Mauritius uh, in 2015. And then our prime minister visited Mauritius after, uh, sorry, India after that uh, on a number of occasions. And today there are more than 50 or rather 60 companies from India that have firmly established themselves that they're operating across various sectors and SECPA is there. So yeah, and uh, that, that's, uh, that relationship, that partnership between the two countries has also gone to a next level in terms of the development that is, uh, India is also supporting Mauritius in its in infrastructure development, where uh, on the left, uh, oh, sorry, sorry, on the right top, you will see that this is a hospital that has been built, the ENT hospital that has been built with the support of the Indian government. And today the ENT hospital is also being used for patients which have to be hospitalized for because of COVID-19. Uh, so this is uh, one of the landmark projects. And uh, the bottom uh, picture, you will see that this is a Supreme Court building. But this is not the only project in terms of infrastructure, because here, when the next picture we we'll see, this is a landmark, in fact, when we speak of major development projects. So this is a metro, and uh, the metro, which is being developed again with the support of the Indian government, and and uh, a Larsen and Tubo LNT, uh, which is de who is developing this this uh, metro project in Mauritius. So the phase phases it is being developed in phases. Phase one and phase two have been completed. Now phase three is under development. And after that, uh, the metro is also being extended to, to other parts of the country and into another section, sector of the, uh, of the country. Again, LNT will develop that. And here I would like just to, to, to briefly say that, uh, you know, when, when a company comes to set up because LNT has been awarded the contract to develop, so they, have, they are there to develop, probably after developing, they will just, you know, complete and then they will, uh, they will, they will, they will come back to India. But however, just to tell you that after developing this project, they have also, one another tender to develop a hospital, a university hospital in Mauritius. So just to say that once you have a presence in Mauritius, opportunities do not stop. You will find new opportunities, not only in Mauritius, but also in the region. That is a possibility that you should be looking exploring when you set up in Mauritius. So uh, in terms of the business uh, relationship between the two countries, you will see that we import a lot of products from, from uh, India. We also export, but our exports are very less. Uh, in fact, only 30 million uh, last year. And again, with SEPA or through SEPA, this, is, uh, this number is expected to increase uh, many fold. In terms of the number of tourists, uh, India is, uh, I think, the fifth uh, largest market for Mauritius in terms of the tourists that was pre-pandemic and we hope up to when, when we are reopening as first of October, this number is going to, to come back to this pre-pandemic level again. And we do have companies from uh, Mauritius that have set up in India, for example, we have the SBM Bank, SBM Bank India, which is set up in India. In fact, SBM Bank is the first bank that has been uh, uh, given approval by the RBI to, to have its wholly own subsidiary license in Mauritius, uh, in India. So the first bank, first foreign bank that has been given this fully owned subsidiary license. And then we have a company which is Rogers, which is uh, operating in the uh, logistics sector, which is uh, Velogic. Rogers is, Rogers is a conglomerate in Mauritius and Velogic is part of Rogers. So Velogic is in the logistics sector in, uh, in uh, Mauritius and they have, I think around eight offices uh, in, in their present in eight cities in India. And we have the Aquarel Group, uh, which is a textile, a major textile company in Mauritius, and they have their units in Bangalore and also in, in, in the south. So here you can see that in terms of the trade, how, how the trade has been evolving over the years. Uh, last year, the figure uh, fell in terms of the exports, but our in, uh, imports are also, uh, sorry, in terms of the imports from India, the figure fell down. But uh, uh, our exports have gradually uh, increased, and we expect this to increase further with SECMA. So, third, uh, India is the third largest trading partner for Mauritius, as you can see in terms of our imports. And uh, some of the companies which are operating in Mauritius, here you can see they are across sectors be it healthcare, be it energy, retail, distribution, uh, manufacturing, education, uh, financial services, IT. Uh, 
Yeah, and even in the hotel industry as well, infrastructure and also. So they are in their telecommunications infrastructure everywhere. Yeah. So yes, uh, SECPA, what I will do, I'll just briefly uh, mention SECPA because I know my good friend, Mr. PK will speak about it uh, at length. So SECPA, it, as I mentioned earlier, it was signed in February and uh, it became operational in uh, April, 2021. So the three components uh, which are covered in the SECPA includes trade in goods, trade in services, and economic cooperation, which is the third component is to be signed. This will be signed within the next two years. Yeah. Oops, sorry. So some of the advantages, I mean, 615 products from Mauritius to Indian market. Um, these products include like special sugars, garments, medical devices, and all that. 310 products from, Mauritius, uh, from India to Mauritius. Some of the uh, eight products I mentioned, yeah, I'll go, I mean, I will let Mr. PK uh, talk about it uh, in his, during his uh, intervention, and if need be, then I can pitch in again. So here uh, we're speaking about special sugars, and this is uh, something very special in fact, uh, and uh, you know, we are a world major producer of uh, special sugars, and uh, we have been given market access, preferential market access for special sugars, that is, the normal import duty in India is 100%, is 100 but for Mauritius special sugar, the import duty will be only 10%, 10%. So this is a major advantage for companies that uh, would be in, interested to look at importing special sugars for the Indian market. So uh, again, I will let that, I will leave that to Mr. PK. So yes, I mean, about Africa, as I mentioned, Africa is uh, 54, 55 countries and it's almost the same, size in terms of population as India, 1.3, 1.2, 1.3 billion people. And it is expected to grow further by 2050 and it will have the largest younger population, young population in the world. So Africa is representing huge opportunity today in terms of uh, investment, trade and business. And Mauritius is well placed, well positioned for companies, uh, global companies, Indian companies to come and position themselves and take advantage of the opportunities that Africa is offering, offering in terms of the various sectors, be it in terms of agriculture, manufacturing, infrastructure, technology, healthcare, education, real estate, construction. I mean, you name it, it's there. So just think about it and then, and then Mauritius will be the right uh, 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 ideal location for you to choose and come and operate from there. So what are the opportunities for Indian companies you know, to look in, in Mauritius? So I mentioned manufacturing, there's food processing, financial services, healthcare, education, logistics, real estate, ocean economy, film, film industry, or technology. So all these opportunities are there today for companies to, to come and set up in Mauritius. So again, this it's the same thing, but a little bit more detail. So these are some of the opportunities again. Right. Yeah. So yes, I mean, uh, once you have decided, okay, uh, you, you want to set up in Mauritius, so how about, how to go about it now? Because you have to come and set up your company, you have to come and uh, work, you have to leave, you have, uh, or even if you want to retire, so these are the possibilities. So how do you do it? Basically, uh, for foreign, foreign uh, investors or foreign nationals to come and invest or work or even live or retire in Mauritius, you need a permit. So what is that permit? In Mauritius, it is called an occupation permit, an OP. So the OP, uh, we give it for you, uh, we, we give it to you for a period of 10 years. So you will get the OP for 10 years. And then after that, it can be renewed, of course. Uh, there is no issue about that. I mean, subject to certain criteria. And uh, same thing for residence permit, I saw the permanent residence permit. So we have extended the permanent residence permit from 10 to 20 years. For retired residence permit, so somebody who wants to come and retire, for in Mauritius, if you want to retire, if you are 50 years plus, 50 years and above, you can come and retire in Mauritius. So this is a possibility that you can look into. Now for you to invest in Mauritius, uh, to, be uh, to be eligible to apply for an occupation permit, the minimum investment required is 50,000 US dollars. So approximately, I would say approximately 46, uh, 50 lakh. So around that, uh, you can invest in Mauritius and then you, you will be able to, uh, you will be eligible for the occupation permit. So this is for investor. 
if you want to come and work in Mauritius, so for uh, somebody as a professional that you need to earn a salary of um, minimum $1,500 monthly, then you'll be eligible to apply to the application permit. And for the retired, uh, a retired person, so if somebody is coming to retire in Mauritius, so they can transfer monthly $1,500 or uh, in the aggregate for the year, they can transfer $18,000 and they are eligible to apply for the um, uh, non-citizen retired, I would say retired retirement permit. And then from there, they can, they can live in Mauritius. Yeah. And of course, when we are giving you all these permits, so your family is, uh, your family is eligible to come, that is your spouse, your kids, but also now we are allowing parents also to come as dependents uh, to come and stay with, 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 the, with you. So if you want to bring your parents, this is also possible. And uh, previously there was some restriction in terms of the age of the child. So now we have removed that restriction. So if your child even is about 24 years old, they can come and stay with you as long as they are still dependent on, on you for all their requirements, be it about education and so on and so forth. So these are the eligibility criteria as I mentioned earlier. So yes, I mentioned about the premium travel visa. So uh, if you want to work remotely, so you don't want to set up, settle in Mauritius, you can come to Mauritius, work remotely in Mauritius, and then still, I mean, uh, you get paid by your company in India. So this is possible. So you work remotely and uh, this is open to all professionals, digital nomads, families, and retirees as well. And uh, one word, I mean, rather two words that will summarize this Mauritius India cooperation in this uh, post COVID area. It's all about optimism and opportunity. And here, there's a famous African proverb that says, if you want to go fast, you go alone. But if you want to go far, you go together. And this is where Mauritius comes into play. It's very, uh, from a very practical uh, point of view, that is, Mauritius comes into play and helps you to grow your business, whether it is in Mauritius or in Africa. So we encourage you to come and uh, settle down or invest in Mauritius and take advantage of all the opportunities that are there in Mauritius. And a uh, quick word about the Economic Development Board. This is an organization that I represent here in India. And my main role, my main responsibility is to encourage companies from India to set up in Mauritius about investing, about work, or professionals to work in Mauritius, or retire, retirees to come and live in Mauritius, or even for, company, for, for individuals to acquire property in Mauritius and also for in uh, Mauritius companies to export their products to India and the second, this is my main role. So the Economic Development Board, which is a single window agency for investment and business, it, was, it is set up uh, as an agency of the government. We operate under the Ministry of Finance, Economic Planning and Development. And the four main roles of EDB are strategic economic planning, trade and investment promotion, business facilitation, country branding. So as I said that you come to us, we are your one single point of contact and we handhold you right from the beginning till you set up your business, but we do not stop there. We continue to do that aftercare also. We provide that aftercare services also when you have set up in Mauritius. So it's a very simple process in terms of setting up in Mauritius. So you submit your business plan to EDB Mauritius. You incorporate your company with the register of company. You sub submit your applications for permits or clearances, for occupation permit, open your bank account, register with the revenue authority, register with customs if you are an export oriented unit, you pay your uh, certain fees, uh, you start operation, exporting from Mauritius, to us for market development, visiting Mauritius and investment business protection. Again, we will facilitate meetings for you. If you want to travel to Mauritius, talk to me. I'll facilitate, facilitate all those all that uh, process for you in terms of your uh, travel to Mauritius and facilitating meetings with relevant stakeholders. So which, these are the main stages involved, as you can see. I mean, uh, what, what I showed here, it's basically uh, in a chart, so it makes it easier for you to follow. So we do have office uh, in Mumbai, I'm based in Mumbai, and then we have offices around the world, uh, France, South Africa, UK, Kenya, Japan, uh, China, and also Singapore. 